Inspired by the opening of spiny lobster season in the Florida Keys, this dish is a unique seafood version of the classic French dish, cassoulet, traditionally made with meat, sausages, and white beans. I'm Chef Jeannie Parola. I'm a five-time James Beard semifinalist and executive chef and owner of several award-winning restaurant concepts. Now I want to share some simple cooking techniques that will make you a better home cook and walk you through some delicious recipes that are sure to impress. This is Flavored by Flame. I'm super excited today to cook a dish for you that was sprung from a classic French dish, cassoulet. You may know that a classic cassoulet is a French dish that's a stew of white beans, lots of different meats, and often sausages. So we're gonna replace all the meat with seafood and do something totally different. First off with the cassoulet, we gotta start the beans, which takes a lot of time. So we're preheating our pan, and this dish starts with dry beans. We've soaked them overnight in lukewarm water. It lets them hydrate, makes them easier to cook, and makes them a lot more tender. After we soak them, we drain them off and we're ready to go. So into the pan that's preheated, we're gonna to touch off with a little bit of olive oil. So I've preheated my pan to medium high heat because what I wanna do is start at a boil and then lower it to simmer to let it just percolate slowly and that creates a super tender bean. So into the pot is my mirepoix ingredients, which we all should know is carrots, onions, celery. We add fennel bulb to give a little bit more depth of flavor. That goes into the pot. Going to add the beans to the mirepoix and we're going to immediately add veg stock. Now, you can use water, you can use vegetable stock, you can use chicken stock. Um, any way is going to get the beans cooked, but we're always trying to coax flavor, so we use flavored stock to create more depth of flavor. In this dish, we also add fresh bay leaf and some thyme. And then to finish it off and bring it towards Florida, we add citrus juice to actually cook the beans in. So this is tangerine and orange juice, which just creates a little bit of acidity in the dish. So we're gonna bring the beans up to a boil. And the way we wanna cook them is slow and low. So once they come up, you wanna drop the temperature down, let them simmer. So now that we have it coming up to a boil, we wanna turn the heat down because beans take a long time and we want to have them simmer and be super tender. Another way to be super efficient with beans is to create a lid. But we don't want to have everything escape. So we do something that we call a cartouche, which is a paper lid. It's just a piece of parchment paper. We take it and we fold it in half. Fold it in half again. It's like you're making an airplane. Remember those days? I do vaguely. You've got your airplane folded up. You kind of center it like that and get an idea of where you want to cut it. You come back and cut the cartouche. And then we're just going to create a hole in the end. And that's what allows for the steam to escape and leave the flavor in the pot. We take the cartouche and we want to press it all the way down on top and seal the sides like that. So as you see that it's rolling, the steam will escape all the flavor will stay underneath the cartouche and you'll end up with the most flavored and tender bean two hours from now. Well, my beans are almost done, but I wanna get ready and going on the seafood. So as I said, this is a spiny lobster cassoulet, only to be found in Florida, the awesome spiny lobster. Season opens in August, it runs till March. It's one of the funnest times in Florida. Everybody runs to the Keys and goes lobstering. And um, simple way to do this. You really just remove the tail very gently, just like that. I'm gonna take this and wash it off. The thing about a spiny lobster, even though the meat is delicious, is the head is no good. It's not a main lobster with giant claws and the great flavorful body. So there's really nothing you can do with it but discard it. Now that I've got the lobster tail ready to go, I'm just gonna split it down the middle. It's a very simple thing to do. You just want to hold it very tightly and just crack it all the way down the middle. And then when you grab it, you can just split it just like that. 
and you end up with two halves, which when you add the sausage and the shrimp to this cassoulet, one lobster feeds two people really beautifully. We've got some Key West pink shrimp and we've got a seafood sausage. Now, we are including this recipe that we made from scratch, this seafood sausage. It's a combination of fish scrap and shrimp, a little bit of lobster. It's very simple to make, but it's an extra step. So we're including that recipe for all you daredevils who want to take on a bigger item. But remember, any sausage can be used for this. You can use chorizo, you can use breakfast sausage, you can use Italian sausage. Whatever flavor you want to create, you really can just interchange sausage like that. I'm gonna get my pan preheated. Because when you sear something, the key to that is having your pan really smoking hot so you get a great crisp texture or a hard sear, which locks in flavor. We've made a seasoning mix, very simple. We've combined kosher salt, cayenne pepper, paprika, coriander, and a little white pepper. My pan is getting hot. And one thing about uh, heating your pans and cooking as a chef, I'm a lucky girl. I have a gas stove in my house. I probably couldn't cook at home if I didn't have gas. Um, cooking with natural gas is the most efficient and effective way. There's not a professional kitchen I've ever been in that didn't have natural gas in it. My pan is up to temperature. I'm just gonna nap it with a little bit of olive oil. And then into my pan, I'm going to sear, start off with my sausage. And then I'm going to take the seafood and I'm going to take my lobster and shrimp dust that we made and I'm just going to season everything. And of course with shrimp you want to season on both sides. Now another way to do this is you could actually remove the complete tail from the shell. Some people find it easier to cook a lobster in the shell. I've left it in the shell because I think it'll be a dramatic look too. And remember with shrimp you got to season both sides. Sometimes there's always scraps, and you can take those scraps, put them in a Ziploc, throw them in your freezer, and get those scraps working for you. And down the road, you can just pull them out and make this sausage, you're gonna be blown away. So as you can see, I'm roasting off my seafood sausage here, trying to get a little bit of flavor in the pan. I've seasoned my seafood, and now I'm gonna sear off my lobster tails. Right into the pan, flesh side down where the seasoning is. That's the sear that I'm looking for. Shrimps as well. Now, as you know, seafood's very delicate. You never want to overcook seafood. You see that shrimp sear right there? That's really what you want right there. That's where the flavor is developing. We'll flip the lobster over because we even want a little roasted lobster flavor. We're going to remove the seafood and then build the cassoulet because we don't want to overcook the seafood. So we will be finishing it in the oven all together. The sausage will continue to roast. So now into the pan, a little more touch of olive oil. And we're going to start with mirepoix. Now you remember I had mirepoix in the beans. You may recall that it was in giant chucks. Because when you're making stock or you're making beans and you're really going to take it out, you can leave it in big chucks, have it rough chopped, get it in there, get it going. It'll still create the flavor you want. We've brunoised all the vegetables, exact same thing, carrots, onions, celery, classically known as mirepoix. We've added fennel bulb because again, we like to create a little more depth. So it's all been brunoised and it all goes in the pan. So we're gonna get our mirepoix going. Once it gets a little bit translucent, we're gonna add some garlics and shallots to it. The reason you add garlic after is because you want the other vegetables that soften to make a field for that garlic to cook and scent. When you put garlic straight in a pan, oftentimes you can burn it or overcook it. That's when you get a bitter flavor and that's what you don't want. I'm gonna put a little thyme. This is thyme that we've just stripped off the leaves, fresh thyme. And then now that our beans are cooked, and our vegetables are softened. We're going to add our beans. Nice and tender beans. Two hours later. We want to combine everything. 
At the bottom of the pan, you're going to notice there's brown particles forming. That's called fond. I don't know why it's called fond, but I'm fond of the fond because that's where all the flavor is. And we want to make sure that as we're cooking, we're kind of scraping up those bits because that's what's really going to develop the flavor. Into the beans, white wine, any dry white wine. I'm going to add some peppers, yellow and red peppers, some tomato concasse. Tomato concasse, for those who don't know, is fresh tomato that's been peeled and seeded and diced. So you're, all you have is the flesh, which gives you that beautiful tomato sweetness and that little back of acidity. So now all our beans are coming together, and we're going to put some fresh parsley. And then we put a little citrus zest, because if you remember when we cooked the beans, we put tangerine and orange juice in it, because that's what's bringing it close to the seafood. It makes it kind of bond with the seafood. You know how great seafood is with citrus. So when we finish this, we add a little citrus, lemon, lime, and orange zest. It just gives it such extraordinary flavor, because in the zest of the fruit is where the essential oil is, and that's really where all the flavor is. So we want to bring this together. The sausage is cooking, and now we're going to add back our seafood. I have preheated my oven, just so you know, to about 375 degrees. And cassoulet, classically, is topped with a breadcrumb mixture. What we've done is we've taken a citrus brioche. Now you can take any brioche and you can take any bread and make crumbs. And what we've done is added a little bit of the same citrus zest, lemon, lime, and orange zest to it. We've added some Parmesan and some parsley to create a little crust. And then what we do is we kind of crust all the seafood, even the sausage, and just the top of the beans. And then this is gonna go in the oven. And what you're looking for is just this really crispy, crusty texture on top of these rich, creamy, flavorful beans and the stunning seafood cassoulet. So I'm gonna pull my awesome cassoulet out of the oven. It's been in about 25 minutes. And what you're looking for, you want to make sure that you've finished cooking everything and that you've got this great crispy crust on top because that's when you know you've got a cassoulet. So I'm going to take one sausage per person. Did you see how juicy that lobster is? I don't know if you saw that. Then I'm going to start mounding my cassoulet right in the middle of the plate. Flanked by my sausage, I'm going to come in with an awesome lobster tail and these killer Key West pink shrimp. And because we can and we put some real tangerine in there, we're going to garnish with a little Florida tangerine and a little micro herbs just to brighten and lighten this dish. The only thing I want to do to finish my extraordinary seafood cassoulet is top it with a little extra virgin olive oil just to bring the richness. And there you have it, spiny lobster seafood cassoulet. Inspired by the Florida Keys and a good French tradition. Please try this dish. You're going to love it. And absolutely try that sausage. For more information about energy efficient natural gas and available appliance rebates, visit peoplesgas.com rebates.